Hello friends, it's Matt Fouch here. I am your local real estate professional here in the Lake Cumberland area. I'm with Keller Williams Commonwealth and I'm hanging out today here at the Keller Williams Commonwealth office. And I've been chatting with Jason Weatherford from Shelter Insurance, man. Thanks for joining me today. Appreciate you having me, Matt. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this conversation we're gonna have. Mm -hmm. um, in every home buying process, the home insurance comes into play. Um, and there are a lot of times, and we were actually just talking earlier with a lady that was just saying, you know, sometimes it's hard to get a hold of someone that does home insurance. And a lot of people just don't even think about the homeowner's insurance part of the puzzle when they're going through it. And so I wanted us just to have a conversation today, um, an informative conversation with the folks that are watching uh, just about the relationship of homeowners insurance to a real estate transaction. And then also there's a lot of folks that um, they maybe have had homeowners insurance on a home for years, but they've never had to use it. Yeah. And so then something happens and all of a sudden now they've never gone through the process. They've never had to deal with it. So now they're kind of like, what do I do? So we got a lot of things that we're going to cover. And my hopes for you all watching is that at the end of this video, you, um, you're informed, you've, you've learned several things about real estate, home ownership, home, homeowners insurance. Um, and we'll just cover a lot of things and we're just going to chat and hopefully provide some great value for you all today. So first thing right off the bat, why don't you just tell the folks watching a little bit about who you are, who you work with, and uh, kind of the areas that you serve. I, uh, like Matt said, I'm Shelter Insurance, located in Somerset, right next to the original Baxter's Coffee location. So if you ever wanna come <laughs> talk about insurance and get a cup of coffee, I'm always up for a cup of coffee. So come on down and see us. So we're right next Speaking to the original. Speaking of coffee, there yes, you go, yeah. Always got coffee by me. Uh, and that office has been there for 38 years. My father-in-law, Rick Girdler, was the agent there for 38 years. And then he decided to step back and retire and I was able to step in and take over for him. So we're located there. We're open 8.30 to 5, Monday through Friday, except holidays. We don't close for lunches. Uh, there's always two or three of us there at a time to where we can always answer calls, get things going. Uh, we pride ourselves on being there, getting quotes in and out. So typically when you call in and you got a basic quote, we can either give it to you over the phone and call you back within 20, 30 minutes and get it to you wow. and get that off your plate. Cause I know it's stressful people are needing to get these numbers and start figuring stuff out. So we always yeah. pride ourselves on getting them out, getting it to the customer to where mm -hmm. they can move on with their process. So we're not holding up anything on whether it's a car, a home, business, whatever it may be. So you guys do, obviously you do other things besides just homeowners insurance. Uh, I know today we're specifically gonna talk about that side of it, but what are some of the other products that you have have a knowledge base and that you on and that you offer? Basically, we do everything but health insurance. Uh, we don't do health insurance, uh, but life insurance, business, auto, personal effects, anything that you're needing other than health, I can take care of it or we can help you go into the right direction. Uh, we have another agency that's right next door and we have a great relationship where we'll split something up if they have a better product uh, coverage than we do. And it's been, it's been a great relationship there, but, uh, life insurance is a big thing that always, always ties into homeowners because I've, I've been getting a lot of questions lately is, okay, does this person have life insurance to cover this loan? So and who is that question? When you get that question, who's that coming from? That's coming from the lender a lot of times saying, do they have life insurance? And with us at the time, a lot of times they don't, but it's an easy fix because most loans are 30 year loans. And if you got a 30 year loan, then you want a 30 year term. And what that means is you lock in that price for 30 years and then you're covering your home loan. If you got a $300,000 loan, you get a $300,000 life policy for 30 years and you're covered. Uh, and a lot of banks are starting to make sure that their loans are covered if something was to happen because money today is very tight and even the banks are keeping an eye on everything. Hmm. So, Let's just say I'm a, I've been, 
First off, let me say this. You mentioned it earlier about the timeliness of the quote. Yes. Okay. So as the realtor part of it, I really appreciate that, right? Yeah, because yeah. the way I try to work for folks that I help is I try to be timely. I try to work quickly for them. I try to accommodate, you know, as much as I can within yeah. the frame of what my schedule will allow for, for that day. Um, and so there are so many people in a transaction from when you start working together with, with somebody that's wanting to buy a home to when you close, there are so many people that get involved along the way. So having professionals that work in a timely manner to get you a quote for homeowner's insurance or whatever it might be, um, that's a huge part of it because we're on a deadline yeah. with the lender and according to what the contract says mm -hmm. to get it from start to finished yep. once we have the contract. So, um, you know, the homeowner's insurance side of it, uh, we really appreciate that you work quickly on that yeah. to help the lender continue their process because mm -hmm. they're the lender. If you're using a lender for a home purchase, they're checking off seemingly a hundred boxes on their side yeah. as well. So um, we appreciate that. But let's say I'm an, a, a, a first time home buyer and I'm sitting here having a conversation with you today mm -hmm. talking about homeowners insurance. Like, let's just say I've never had to deal with it. I don't really know anything about it. Mm -hmm. um, why do I need it? Yeah. Do I have to have it? Um, what do the numbers look like? Like, what are we talking about as far? Are we talking about tens of thousands of dollars? Are we talking, you know, what kind, how, and, and how do I pay for it? Yeah. Like, how, how, do, how do you guys get paid? You know, so kind of the basics of homeowner's insurance for someone that's watching that would say, I've never bought a home before. I don't even know where, what's going on here. And some people, and you know this too, yeah. some people that were first time home buyers, they just, the lender said, Hey, you got to get homeowner's insurance. And they said, call this person. They called them. They, and then they sent the quote to the, to the lender. The lender put it into the package. It got done. And the person is sitting back like, I don't even know who my, I don't even know who my homeowner's insurance person is. I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing with this. You know, so walk them through why, how it works, the cost, you know, all that as someone experiencing this for the first time. Well, first of all, with insurance, you, if you're having a loan on your home, you're not going to get the loan until you show proof of insurance. Uh, the bank wants to make sure that their investment is going to be covered. Okay. Uh, so if you're getting a loan, your bank is going to going to want to have an insurance policy, whether you pay it or they pay it. I'll go through that. So somebody calls and says they're buying a house, like you send me a listing and uh, I talk to that individual and I find out basically what the asking price is and ask them what, what are they paying for it. And that's a really good starting point to give them rough ideas. So let's say it's a $350,000 house. I will sit down with them and I'll ask them just some basic questions. Uh, insurance companies wanna know, is the home you know, brick, vinyl, just all the basic square footage. And we go through and we put it all into our computer system. And then within that computer system, I put the amount, if it's a $300,000 house. And then now with that amount, you gotta figure out your deductible. And what your deductible is going to be is if you have a claim, if hail damage ruins your roof, we give you $10,000 to replace it. You have to pay your deductible. So that deductible, if you get $10,000, we're going to give you $9,000 if you have a $1,000 deductible. $1,000 is typical. It's kind of and what your The deductible, pocket, is it every claim or every reset claim. every year or how it's, does that? It's every claim. Okay. So if you have, if we have a hail storm in March, that tears up your roof and you get a new roof, you got to pay a deductible. If two months later a windstorm comes and tears off siding, you have to pay another deductible. Okay. And the way I per tell incident. Per incident, yes. Okay. And the way I tell people on your deductible, what are you comfortable with? Yeah. Like your insurance, the lower your deductible, if you have a five hundred dollar deductible, your insurance is going to be higher. But if you have a five thousand dollar deductible, it'll be much lower. What can your pocketbooks take? Right. And what type of risk can you take? Yeah. Uh, so, for instance, if you got a claim and it's twelve hundred dollars, and we're going to give you two hundred dollars, it may not be worth putting in a claim because that two hundred dollars is going to go against you, and it may raise your rates. Not saying that it will with different companies, it may, but you got it's kind of a self insurance thing. Makes sense. Uh, yeah. So, some people that don't have loans, they may not even want insurance on their home because they want to save that money each year. And if it burns down, they'll just pay cash for it. 
I've never run into any of those people, right. but they're out there. That's a little, <laughs> little bit of a risk there. Yes, <laughs> yes. Right? So absolutely. But once we get basic numbers, we're going to go in and do a cost estimator on the home. So we put it into a computer system. All insurance companies have it. We put the year the home was built and basically break the home down piece by piece and hit enter. Then that cost estimator is going to say, okay, this house is going to cost $400,000 to rebuild. Even though you're paying $300,000 for it, it's going to cost more to rebuild. Mm. So banks always want to see your cost estimators and they want to know what is this house going to be to rebuild? Because that's what we're going to want. So if it's $400,000, then we're going to have to write you a policy now for $400,000. And it breaks everything down from how many doors you have, bathrooms, bedrooms, uh, kitchen. Is your kitchen custom, basic, mm -hmm. builder's grade? Uh, you can break it down to really fine tune your house to figure out what it's going to cost to rebuild. And those change constantly on what building material in your area is. So it's actually like based for Somerset, Kentucky, as compared to California. Mm. Uh, California is probably gonna be much higher than Somerset. So we go down through those numbers and then the bank says, okay, we need a $400,000 policy. So we put that together. Now within your policy, it's a package deal. So with homeowners, you get your dwelling coverage, which is your home. So let's, for ease of numbers, $100,000 house, you get a $100,000 policy but now you got personal property in there. So if your house burns down, you're losing your couch, your clothing, yeah. forks, everything is gone. And that's not included in a dwelling. So you have personal property. And the way shelter does is it's 70% of your home value. So if you have a $100,000 house, you have $70,000 worth of personal property. So that's everything within your home that is not connected, not like cabinets, stuff like that. We're talking couches, dressers, all the goods in there. Some right. people may say, hey, you know, I got a $100,000 house, but I got a lot more stuff. Can we up that? Yes, we can raise that amount, but we cannot lower it. It's all built in. And then below that, you're gonna have additional living expenses with that policy. So if something happens, not only do you lose your house, but everything within it, but where are you gonna go now? Hmm. You gotta find somewhere to live. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put you up more than likely in a hotel at first, but then we're gonna find you a suitable home to rent. Mm -hmm. Put you inside of a house for up to 24 months, and that way we can get your claim settled, we can get a new home built, uh, find somewhere else for you to go, and at the same time, we the insurance company will automatically cut you a check. Mm -hmm. Day one and say, here, get on your feet. Yeah. You need clothes, you just lost everything. Right. So you're gonna you're gonna want that. So that that's included within that policy is your additional living expenses. Then you have liability. So liability within that, if your friend comes over and they fall off the front porch, and they go to sue you, you need coverage. And it's it <laughs> that's happens. some kind of friend, isn't it? <laughs> yes, but you'd be surprised. It happens a lot. I'm sure. I'm look sure. at all the billboards up and down the road. <laughs> right. The hammer will get you. <laughs> So you got to have right. that liability coverage to cover in case someone gets hurt at your property. If let's say you have a pet and it winds up biting somebody, they're probably going to ask for medical. That's where your liability coverage comes in. So you always want to make sure that you have liability, which is going to be built in minimums a hundred, maximums usually a million. You can get more than that, but you got to pay a little extra typically. I set them at $300,000 typically. So within that, you got an entire package that covers everything that you need on your home, from your actual home to your personal property. We're gonna put you up to live somewhere. You have your liability. You have some medical expenses built in there. Uh, and then you can go beyond that and add stuff. So we have things called endorsements. Uh, one of the endorsements I always add on and that you need to make sure wherever you're at, is called a drainage system endorsement. And what that is, is anything within your home that drains, like a dishwasher, if all of a sudden that drain breaks and floods your house, if you don't have that endorsement, you're not gonna have coverage. Mm. And I just build it in automatically to all the policies and I let them know, hey, you're gonna want this. And depending on the house, I'll put 10 to $20,000 on it. But the way that way we make sure that that is covered because right. some people overlook that and they want the cheapest policy they can get, but cheap sometimes ain't good because right. you got to have those little things in there. So, so obviously we're talking 
all kinds of different things that's included in it, right? Yes, I mean, yes. you're mentioning so many different things. But for a person that's going through it and all they know is their lender has said, hey, you just need homeowner's insurance, just call somebody, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so we're covering all of what's needed in that. So you've got everything, now we've got everything covered in there for what we yeah. need, our personal belongings to replace the home, some shelter while we are in, uh, in limbo yeah. for, for while everything's going on. Now, how do I pay for that? Well, you got a couple different options. Uh, we always ask the, the buyer, said, hey, are you paying for this out of your pocket? And what you can do either, you can pay monthly, quarterly, every six months or yearly. So you have options to pay personally. It's nice. Or your bank will pay it. And what I mean by that is the lender will send us a check. So they send us, let's say it's $1,200 a year, they send us a $1,200 check and then they break that up into 12 months for you. So now you're paying $100 extra a month. So if your house payment's $500, it's gonna be 600 now because they're including your insurance in that. Okay. Same with taxes. So a lot of times, personally, I let the bank take care of my taxes and my insurance. So I pay for that monthly. Mm -hmm. So the bank sends the insurance company a check, they put it in there, it's paid, it's good to go. At the end of the year, the insurance company sends you a bill, but they're also sending your lender a bill. So your lender will be the one to pay it. And what we're doing is we're sending you a bill with a deck page so you know, hey, these are my coverages still. And you may look at it at that point. For instance, after what we just happened, all the prices went up. You may look down and say, I got a $200,000 policy. I need to call my insurance agent and talk to them because 200 ain't got covered no more. Right. And that's when we can sit down and we can say, okay, build it in the computer system and raise it to where it needs to be. So even though you're not seeing it anymore, your lender takes care of it for 30 years if that's what your loan is. Right. You probably want to keep up with it because this is what this is covering your lively your life right here, yeah. your home. Yeah. So what's that called when the lender takes care of it? It's called escrow. Yes. There we go. Escrow, yeah. yes. So when you're talking to your lender and you're talking numbers and they say, well, the, the loan payment is X, but then when you add escrow in, then it becomes Y. Mm -hmm. And you're like, whoa, 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 wait, wait, what, what are you talking about escrow? What's escrow? Escrow is when you are allowing the lender to handle paying your property taxes and your insurance for you. And they are just dividing that out to the 12 months, like you mentioned, and then they're adding that to your payment. So when you look at your payment, you're gonna see, this is how much my principal is on the loan for the mortgage. This is how much I paid in interest on the loan for the mortgage. And then this is my escrow, which includes my insurance and taxes. Now you can choose to do your taxes and insurance aside from the lender if you mm -hmm. want to, but um, for what we're talking about here today and what he was just mentioning, that's called escrow that's being added to, um, to your monthly payment. So that way you don't have to worry about the bills that come every year and you're, you're spreading that payment out basically in a 12 month period. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're looking at that document, it comes from the lender Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, why is the payment this, but now the payment's this, or you, or lender, you quoted me yes. this number for what my payment would be. But now that we have this extra escrow thing, that's what that is. And, and so that's an, an easy way. I do it too, um, for you to take, take care of in monthly payments, your taxes and insurance. Okay. So we've got those things covered. Now, the last piece I want to inform the folks with is I'm a homeowner. I've got insurance, but I've never had to use it before. And it's escrowed through the lender. And so I really, I just get this thing once a year and I just kind of look at it and I maybe file it away, or maybe I even just throw it in the trash, but now something has happened and mm -hmm. I've got a major home issue a storm blew through and I've got a roof issue and I've got a leak yeah. or uh, a fire happened yeah. and now I need, I need to figure out what to do. So what's the process from that point? Um, briefly tell them what are some of the, the steps they're going to go through to get their claim filed and start the process towards um, getting that taken care of. Okay. Well, you know, heaven forbid anything ever happens, but it does. And that's why you have insurance. Uh, the first thing you gotta do is contact your insurance company. 
whether it's your local agent. So if you have their cell phone, you might send them a message. Yeah, it's 11 o'clock at night, I'm calling you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and if you, don't have, if you don't have your agent's number, right. every insurance company has a 1-800 number. You can call that 1-800 number. They're on there 24 hours a day. And but you don't want me to call you and come to your house and be uh, like, Jason, what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> if I gave you my cell phone, then that's fair game. Okay. So yes, you can do that. You can do that for sure. But like, once you put that claim in, you call the 1-800 number, you call your local agent, you call your insurance company to get that started. Immediately, it goes into a computer system. Now. The thing is, once that claim is put in, I really am not updated on it. So as the agent, it's gonna be taken over by- You probably have a claims department or correct. something with your company that handles it. So it's gonna be an adjuster. Okay. So at that point, that adjuster takes over and then he's going to be reaching out to you saying, Matt Fouch, I understand you had a loss. And depending on the severity of that loss, let's say it's a fire loss, you lost everything. They're immediately working to get you into a place. They're cutting you a check to give you some living money and then you got to start paperwork. And paperwork, it's a federal law. Uh, anytime there's a loss, you got to show a loss sheet. Insurance fraud's a big thing. So insurance companies are just covering themselves and making sure that everything is on the up and up. So once that claim is started, an adjuster's gonna call and say, hey, I understand you had a, a claim. Let's go ahead, whatever you do to mitigate your damage. Let's say it's roof, you put a tarp on it, keep up with all your receipts because as an insured and homeowner, it is your responsibility to try to mitigate damage. So that is in all the contracts. So you just can't sit back with your roof open and just say, I'm gonna wait five days for an insurance company to come. Go ahead and get that thing sealed up to where you stop damages. Then the company's gonna come out. They're basically going to write up an estimate, the same as your contractor is gonna do. And they're gonna say, Matt, this is gonna cost you X amount to complete. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna give you this, you know, we're gonna write you a check to get this going and then you need to get a contractor lined up. So the insurance companies will not line you up a contractor. The reason why is liability. If I have XYZ come out and they don't do a good job, the insurance company is in on the hook because they didn't do a good job. Mm. So once that claim started, the adjuster will walk you through the entire process. They'll call you, They'll send you emails, forms, get everything going. Now, something on your policy that some people don't understand is most policies are replacement costs. Earlier, we talked about doing a replacement cost, the estimator, to know what it costs to replace. But on a roof, let's say your roof got blown off, it cost $10,000 to repair. They're gonna give you your, basically the actual cash value of your roof at the time. If it's 50% used, we're gonna give you $5,000. You get it repaired, but then after you get it repaired, recoverable depreciation, you send in your bill and we'll give you the rest of that money showing that you got it done. Mm. So gotcha. they depreciate. Now some companies just depreciate you out your roof and you gives actual cash value. So depending on the type of claim, there's lots of factors, whether it's gonna be depreciated out or you're gonna get a full amount up front. Uh, personal property, they typically give you X amount. Once you send in receipts, they give you more. So depending on the claim, depends on the process. And your adjuster will walk you through that entire process. Now, if you need help with something, a lot of times you can call your agent. Your agent can get a hold of the adjuster and find out exactly what they're talking about. Because let's be honest, it's stressful. Yeah. I don't, you're not catching it all. Right. There's a lot going on. Yeah. And you, you don't know what to do. And I've always dealt with Matt Fouch. I don't want to deal with this random person on the phone. So I'm right. coming to Matt Fouch saying, I don't understand this. Yeah. So that's when we can step in and do a little digging on the well, back and, end. And you work it every day, every week, every month, every year. Yes. Like you're in that, you're in the trenches, you're helping somebody through a claim or you're, 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 you're you talk the lingo, yeah. you know, and adjusters, I feel like it's probably like some of the folks in the, in the real estate field where they just use the lingo or they don't have good, what I would say like bedside manners or, yes. you know what I'm saying? So like you sit back and you're like, man, I don't, I don't get it at all. I don't really understand what's going on. I don't have a clue what you're even talking about, dude. Like, so then I'm coming to the guy that I've sat at his desk or I've been to his office. I'm like, okay, break this down into simple terms for me. Help me yeah. understand where we're at in the process, 
where we're going. What do and, I uh, do next? Do yeah, I just yeah, sit yeah. here and wait or exactly. do I got to make a phone call? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's, you know, that's one thing to me with insurance and uh, when I'm helping someone buy a property, I, I say to, to folks say, okay, when it comes time for your homeowner's insurance, do you want just a national company that just, you can go online and get a quote and they provide coverage? Mm -hmm. Or do you want someone that you can actually go in and sit down at their desk or walk into their office and say, Hey, I need to talk about this yeah. or I need help figuring this out. Or hey, I just have to be driving by and remembered I need to pay my premium. You know, whatever yeah. it is, yeah. you can actually go there and do it. Talk to the person that eats, sleeps, breathes, lives it. Yeah. Um, as opposed to maybe calling a 1-800 number, hoping to, not have to be on hold for an hour and a half before you get, get somebody yeah. right yeah so you know that's something too that i would recommend that folks think about and make a decision on their side when you are going through the home purchase or if you already own a home and you're looking at your homeowner's insurance and you're saying what am i comfortable with what do i want what works for me um those are to me and i don't know there may be other options but for me to me that's the two options Go with somebody online, mm -hmm. go with somebody yeah. you can just walk into their office and they're in town. It's the same like picking a realtor. <laughs> I'm gonna get online and I'm gonna Google, I'm gonna randomly pick one or I'm gonna do a little bit of research. Yeah. And I'm gonna say, okay, this person has good reviews. Yeah. And I call them and they picked up right away when I call. So that means a lot. Yeah. Some people want that personal relationship. Yeah. So, you know, if you're if you're okay with just getting online and you know, dealing with 1-800 numbers, you have a claim, you got to stay on hold, that, that's great. A lot of times you can save a little bit of money doing that. But in time of need, it's always good to have somewhere somewhere, and someone you can go talk to. So yeah. make sure whoever you deal with, you trust them and you feel comfortable with them. And if you have any questions, trust me, with insurance, there's no stupid question. Insurance is very confusing. Yeah. The deck sheets that they send out, there's a lot to them. And you're like, what's that? And even if the agent doesn't really know how to answer it, they can just pick up the phone and make a phone call real quick and find out. But you have to trust who your insurance agent is just as much as you gotta trust your realtor that they're yeah. not ripping your head off and they're selling you something that is gonna be a problem child down the road. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, I hope this has been informative for you guys. Man, do you got any last bit of information you wanna share with the folks in regards to homeowner's insurance, the process as far as uh, when they buy a home um, or even, hey, if they've enjoyed what you've had yeah. to say and they're like, hey, I think I want to contact Jason and talk to him about insurance or this issue I have or whatever. How do they contact you? Any last words you want to share with them? Yeah. Anytime. One thing I do want to throw in and and it's my insurance side of things coming in there. I never looked at it this way. But whenever you do look at buying a home, do think about life insurance uh, to cover because if your spouse is left with that house payment, are they gonna be able to take care of that house payment? Are they gonna be able to afford it? So what I tell people typically is 30 year loan, 30 year term. Let's get a little bit of life insurance because in the scheme of things, it's not that much. And it's almost, people are like, well, what happens if I don't use it? You lose it, sort of like your house insurance. Yeah. It, it's, it's the same type of gamble. There is options where you can get life insurance and actually build cash value. But for most times, like for instance, in my case, when I bought my first home, I needed the cheapest I could get. Mm. I needed to get coverage. So that life insurance will cover your home to where this home that you've worked so hard for does not get lost whenever yeah. something happens to one of you. So be sure to do that. But I would love to talk, even if I don't have you insured, if you have questions about insurance, we talk to people every day about that. They're like, I don't understand. It's like, we'll come in because I like to learn just as much as you do. So yeah. if I don't know the answer, I'll find out real quick. But yeah. we're right at 429 Ogden Street, right next to the original Baxter's location. Uh, our phone number is 606-679-8271. We're there from 7.30 to 5. Uh, email is my first initial, which is J, my last name, which is Weatherford, at shelterinsurance.com. You can send us emails. We'd love to be able to walk you through the process, quote you, see if we can do better or uh, even just help you out understanding your policy because I love to meet people. And I like how you enunciated your last name there. 
Whether Ford. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned a lot of these people moving in from out of town, they find it hard to understand the accent. So yeah. I've, I've, been, I've been meeting a lot of California people, yeah. Arizona, a lot of Northerners, and, and they love the Kentucky, Kentucky yeah. accent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they don't take them living here long before they start picking up on a few things. Yes, on yes, that absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> hey guys, thanks so much for watching. If you are in need to buy or sell real estate here in the South Central Kentucky, Lake Cumberland area, uh, let me know, 859-409-8369. Subscribe to the channel, like on Facebook, all that stuff. But I hope this has been informative for you all. You've learned a little something here today. And uh, we'll see you next time, maybe one of the home uh, video tours that I do, or maybe we'll be sitting down in the future with somebody else just to talk more. There's so many things that are connected to a real estate yeah. transaction. And so it's always good to sit down with some professionals from those different areas and learn. Yeah. Um, so thanks for joining me, Jason. Appreciate you. And thanks you all for watching.